Hey everybody, welcome back with your boy Beano Mac. Now this week we're going to go over the WWF Smackdown Just Bring It, how to unlock the Smackdown Fist Arena. Now this was actually the new arena at the time. Um, for whatever reason, I, I never really understood why the old Smackdown games did this. Um, so we're just going to get right into it with uh, how to do it. First off, just pick the rock. And um, you're going to do the slobber knocker match. And the exhibition, the special match types. And uh, you're going to want to pick the rock, like I said. And you're going to want to get at least 15 um, wins in this. Um, I think there's some conflicting reports. Some people say 17. Um, some people even say you have to beat the full, you know, the whole record with 20 at least. Um, I got it with 15, but either way, um, you're going to see I have more, like I think I end up with like 24 at the end of it. It's not too hard. Um, also one more disclaimer is that once you get to that point, you know, let's say you get to 16 or 20, however many you think you feel safe with, um, you still want to finish out the match. So once again, 15 is what I, from my understanding, what I always got. And I unlocked it. Obviously, I did better in this playthrough, but um, 15 is the number. Just like um, for Fred Durst, um, last time he seen on the slobber knocker, uh, with Fred Durst, it was Undertaker. You had to get 15 to unlock him from Limp Biscuit. But yeah, I never really understood. So like. In this game, the SmackDown Fist, like they made the arena. They knew like, okay, this is the updated SmackDown arena. So I never understood why you had to unlock it this way. Like they were just weird about a few things like that from back in the day, like SmackDown 2, for example. Um, Kane's attire, um, you know, his updated tank top attire that he has in this game um, actually was in SmackDown 2. Um, his base model, like the character model they used was his classic, you know, signature one sleeve missing outfit but um they had the full model in the game and for some reason you know they didn't use his updated SummerSlam 2000 attire for Kane as the actual playable character. I do have a hack video you know shameless plug of uh, Smackdown 2 attire hacks showcasing things like that like Kane with his tank top attire as a regular playable slot using game shark codes um, Perry Saturn is also an example. Um, I believe they had like so many models for characters because they kept changing the gimmicks. Like Bull Buchanan has a SWAT attire outfit. Um, Perry Saturn, they originally were going to go with his red tights, but I think they changed it and swapped it out with his black tights they updated later on in the year. Um, Eddie DeGuerrero was also a good example, you know, he had the longer hair at the beginning of the year, the blue tights. So, it was pretty cool because they were beta attires, but they kept them, you know, like, they kept them in the game, something that you can unlock. Um, and just, you know, create alternate versions of the characters, but I think they said would just bring it, they, like the WWE physically said, no, you cannot um, do that anymore. And I'm assuming it like, you know, copyrights and rights issues, depending on how they looked and whatnot. So unfortunately, they didn't have where, you know, you could just make multiple versions of The Rock based on past iterations or, you know, beta outfits he may or may not have had. Which is a real shame, because it was just so cool that you could do stuff like that. Like, I'm sure in this game, if they allowed you to do that same feature, you know, you could create The Rock with his t-shirt. Um, you could create Stone Cold in his uh, t-shirt and jean shorts you see in story mode. You know, stuff like that. Probably the beta Kurt Angle where he doesn't have the straps on, you know, and he just kind of has his blue trunks. But, you know, it's, it is what it is. But as you can see, I'm just kind of mowing along. It seems like something that in your head a lot of times you know this is going to be way harder how do i be you know 20 guys in 10 minutes it's really not that difficult they usually go down with one uh move one finisher sometimes you know you can just clothesline somebody and they'll already be right for a pin 
but yeah there are times where you do get that you know jerk that doesn't stop countering you for whatever reason and it, it does get annoying speaking of Eddie Guerrero also um, just for a heads up if you're ever curious you know I know I just like to play out these matches and showcase the full thing and it's probably too late for me to even really mention this if we're being honest but um you know if you happen to still be wondering uh you know is there a quicker way i can just get all this stuff you know on the story pass how to figure it out without you know watching too much i probably shouldn't be trying to encourage people to leave my videos early <laughs> but um yeah everything you know the basic you know step-by-step -step premise that you have to do um, is it's always going to be in the description. Obviously, with these ones like the Slobber Knockers, it's just simple: 15 wins with the specific characters. I think it's only the Rock and uh, Undertaker where doing this kind of stuff nets you specific rewards. I always thought that uh, that green attire that Edge had was so cool. Just even looking at the roster at this time, I mean, look at the kind of guys that are popping in here. You know, the Dudleys, Edge and Christian, Triple H, Undertaker, Kane. I mean, we were, we didn't realize how good we had it. Which I think the Ruthless Aggression era, I think is vastly underrated. I think the storyline, that we had really bad stinkers, let's be honest. I mean, Katie Vick, uh, <laughs> Shane Snitsky, punting the, the baby that lead I had with the miscarriage like <laughs> that's a whole story in and of itself but I mean even then like I think some of the, when you look back on it the Katie Vick was bad especially you know the Triple H and you know what happened you know with the, the casket I don't even want to explain it but uh, they still had really really stupid um, very plain uncomfortable storylines in the Attitude Era you know d -Lo Brown he had the original miscarriage. Oh, it wasn't really him. It was actually, uh, it was Terry Runnels. Um, I think it was, they were in a match. She was supposed to be pregnant. She was just running around aimlessly saying, hey, I think you're the dad. No, you're the dad. I think it's a storyline because nobody was accepting responsibility, which yeah, you know, another brilliant storyline idea. But um, yeah, I think she stepped on the ropes during like a D-Wo match to, you know, get somebody's attention or something. D-Wo, like ran into her when she was on the apron she fell off onto her stomach and uh you know backstage she was pretending like she was hurt and um the doctor put like a stethoscope to her stomach said you know he didn't hear a heartbeat so yeah that's as a wrestling fan that's something that i'd love to see on my show you know a guy thinking he poor guy thinking he killed a, a kid by accident you know causing a miscarriage which, I mean, she eventually in the storyline said, you know, I forget who it was. It was her, her. It couldn't have been her herself. It was somebody. You know, I think it was the doctor, the same doctor who said they didn't hear Harpy. He also said that, no, she was never pregnant to begin with. Um, another one is Mae Young with the hand storyline. I mean, like, not only is it just gross, but I mean, come on. Like, they call that. They call that <laughs> entertainment. It's, it's not even really entirely funny to me. Like, all right, I got a good chuckle, I guess, but I'm not one of those people where like I'm super uptight about my wrestling or anything like that. But when something's just that stupid, it's like, come on. I get it's entertainment, but give me something. But there's a few storylines that are like that in uh, the Attitude Era. Honestly, we had the uncomfortable um, blackface with X Pac during the Nation of Domination. Um, I think they called it a parody or a skit. You know, he said that's the biggest regret of his whole career. X-Pac, I feel like it's a bad rap sometimes. I mean, he did a lot of dumb, stupid, disgusting things. You know, shitting in people's lunges and he played too many ribs. But from what I hear, he actually is a pretty good guy at heart um, in comparison to a lot of the other people in the, the clique. Which it's kind of crazy, you know, Albert's in this game representing the uh, the X-Factor, but X-Pac, the actual leader of the group, uh, is nowhere to be found. And I think he was, um, 
Tajiri is the light heavyweight champion, but right before Tajiri won the light heavyweight championship, it was X-Pac who was, and I keep saying it in the same sentence, light heavyweight champion. So, I mean, it's just, this game is so weird with the guys they decided to exclude. Obviously, Just Incredible wasn't included either, which is unfortunate. I think Hardcore Highway, speaking of beta models, um, Hardcore Highway and Crash both had um, beta models. Crash had his classic, like, um, like based off of his No Mercy attire, his singles attire, and then um, Hardcore Highway had like a blue version of that attire rather than the green. But Young Boy uh, Eleven actually has a video showcasing all the unused attires and whatnot, and a video recently he uploaded. So you should check that out if you're interested. But that's going to do it for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like, comment, and subscribe for more daily content. And make sure to hit the notification bell to be updated on that daily content. Make sure you tune in next week for more Just Bring It content.